beautiful lady you call me I see reflections of me And yet a stranger to myself I'm not the girl I'd like to be And my soul is my own Hello I walk with rhythm and with grace Because I know you call me a truly lovely lady. I feel you don't know how to grow. And my soul is my own. I think I'm part of the underground, actually. Even if I do a few commercial films, uh, I mean, uh, the people I see and uh, my friends and uh, all started like that. Uh, and from underground, one gets to upper ground, <laughs> if it works. And it happened uh, almost naturally, quite easily. My father was an actor, my mother was an actress. Uh, so it was like an evident, I was brought up Choice. in this uh, milieu and uh, it was the easiest and like evident choice for me. I started quite young, but I was married already, so you know. Christian helped me, yeah, and introduced me to Daryl Zanuck, uh, who put me under contract. And um, so for a year I had lessons at, in New York with Stella Adler, and I'd go to her place, and uh, we'd uh, talk things over, and she'd give me text to study. And uh, I never made a film for Fox, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I studied quite a lot, it was nice, you know. My first film was Modesty Blaze, Joseph Loza, and uh, the second film was that Western with Dean Martin and Alain Delon called Texas Across the River. It was a Western comedy. You have to kiss Alain Delon in that film, or? I'm in love with him. I'm his uh, Indian girl. girl that follows him all over and uh, saves him from... I remember there's that scene where he gets bitten by a snake and uh, I suck the poison off his leg. <laughs> when did you move to, to doing film in Italy? Well, it was... Uh, End of 60s, around 68, I, I did a partner with Bertolucci and um, a film with Franco Nero, which was a story of Carmen called yeah, The uh, Man, the Pride, and the Vengeance. Uh, yeah, that's it. And you play Carmen. In yes, that. I loved it. You had a difficult partner in there, you remember? Uh, uh, Klaus Kinski is not a difficult partner. That's a a legend, he was quite all right. <laughs> I did a few films with him and he never was that difficult. Anyway, not with me. Because of the censorship in Italy, I guess, and all over, it never came out. It was quite a nice, uh, free, uh, fun film. We shot in, in Italy and in England, and well, we shot in, in the Sherwood Woods. Forest, yeah. <laughs> 
it was quite quite an experience because uh, most of the time was improvised and uh, early 70s uh, we were it was uh, another movement of freedom and uh, you know a new way of living and i guess uh, it showed in the films then you also worked with uh, fellini in uh, casanova Yes, I, I play Enriqueta, the, the loved one. I have a lovely part. Uh, I travestied myself as a boy. Uh, I play cello. Uh, I make him suffer, I leave him. I think it's the only woman uh, he, he really loves, in the film anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't quite remember exactly how I got involved, but uh, uh, it's uh, Canavari who probably asked for me. There was also a lot of uh, lesbian thematic scenes. Soft, soft. soft. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, well they, they are big friends, those two girls, uh, aren't they? <laughs> so. I remember there's that scene in a bathtub, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I do remember now <laughs> uh, shooting that one. I enjoyed it. <laughs> she was quite uh, exotic. Beautiful woman. I didn't uh, know that uh, that she was operated. Let's say. <laughs> Do you think most of the team was aware she was not really a woman, or? Oh, I don't know. I I I, I don't think so. <laughs> she, you know, she was so feminine. She was a woman. <laughs> Cultural beauty, uh, tall and uh, fascinating, fascinating. Did you know she died? Uh, well, that's what I heard uh, uh, yesterday. Yes, and so did Pistilli last year. Yes, sadly. <laughs> So oh, I'm the only survivor. <laughs> uh, around the same time, uh, you did uh, a film with uh, Minelli. Uh, it was a bit after. Uh, it was called A Matter of Time, Nina or A Matter of Time. Uh, it was a, a play that Maurice Druon wrote called The Contessa. And it was with Ingrid Bergman, Charles Boyer, Liza Minnelli, me. And it was his last film. He was charming. It was a quite a bigger production than uh, Principe. Uh, well, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. No Dolce Vita on the shooting of Principessa Nuria. <laughs> no. Anyway, you have to, to wake up early in the morning so you can't party that much when you're doing a film. Kind of exhausted when you finally, the day is over. <laughs> and wake up very early next day too. Uh, the Minelli film was shot in Cinecittà and a bit in Rome. Villa Borghese. Uh -huh. 
Chinichita uh, was like a, a village uh, of its own with a, uh, its uh, wardrobe, its cordonniers, uh, set, uh, you know, it's a whole factory, a little metropole. You, you create your own world. I never felt like these stars, you know. Uh, it's a, a, as movie making is a travail d'équipe, how do you say, um, a teamwork. Uh, wherever you are, uh, you're just doing your work. And, uh, working in studio uh, gives you a lot of facilities that you don't have uh, exterior for the camera, the lights, uh, sets, and, you know, that's evident. But uh, I, didn't, I don't feel especially different uh, whether it's in the studio or I'm part of the film. back to France. Yeah. It was uh, after Cadavre um after the Fellini, it was, uh, what, 79 or 78, something like that, yeah. Uh, the in Italian movie industry uh, uh, was less brilliant uh, in the 90s that, that it was uh, at that time. and. Uh, Anyway, I, I haven't really been back there since.